What's happening, sports fans? We welcome you back into another Prep Insider. And this one for me is exciting. Edgar Salazar runs SD Prep Track. Uh, and I'm realizing now that's a better pun than I thought that was going to be, that he runs SD Prep Track. Uh, it's I mean, it's the source, man, for all things cross-country and track-related, which I ironically, it took until the pandemic for me to learn about just how deep the talent is because all of a sudden, out of the woodwork, I was like able to interview kids going to all these major USC, uh, Stanford, Colorado, like whatever it was, major school type stuff out of San Diego. So I realized it's time for us to give a little bit more love. So Edgar's on to join us. We had two major meets in the last 72 hours, one here in San Diego and then one out of the section. We got two more major meets coming up in the next few weeks. And uh, that feels like a great jumping off point. Edgar, thank you so much for joining us. What happened this weekend? Yeah, so uh, first off, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, and second off, um, I also want to thank uh, Noah Monroy, who actually created SD Prep Track. Um, I definitely wouldn't be here without the opportunity he gave me. Uh, so thank you, Noah, um, because you opened new doorways for me. Uh, but going off of what you said, um, yeah, so the, the two major meets that happened uh, this week, the first one was in San Diego at Morley Field, which is actually uh, also the site of the Foot Locker Cross Country Championships. Uh, and those will be held on December 11th, uh, if you want to come out and watch. Uh, and the second meet was held in Norco, California at the Silver Lake Sports Complex. And that was the Woodbridge Cross Country Invitational. Um, so we'll start Let's off with the Mount Carmel meet. Yeah. Uh, so the Mount Carmel meet, um, that would have been the Mount Carmel Cross Country Invitational uh, hosted, you know, hence the name by Mount Carmel High School. Um, and I think the big highlight of that meet was uh, Ken and Paula's 1458. Uh, you know, it's a very difficult course. Um, it's not a 5K exactly. It's, it's a little bit shy of it, but uh, still impressive nonetheless. Um, so that was definitely the highlight of the meet, uh, Ken and Paul's uh, 1458. I think he's been um, the talk of not just San Diego, but California uh, in, the, in, the up, in the past few weeks. Um, he, as of now, he does have the fastest 5K time uh, not only in San Diego, but also in California, that's a 5k time of five or a 15, 16, uh, that he ran two weeks, two weeks, two weeks ago at the, uh, invitational down in South Bay. Uh, so he's ranked number one in California for that. Um, another big highlight from that meet, uh, I would say was the, uh, I think JC farmer, JC farmer from Rancho Bernardo. Uh, she, she had, uh, she qualified to state her freshman year in a, I want to say both cross country and track. Uh, sophomore season, she had a, a few setbacks uh, injury-wise. Uh, junior year, obviously, she didn't really get uh, much of a season. Uh, and she did get a track season, which uh, you could tell she was starting to make a comeback. Uh, and now I think it's it's uh, clearly evident that she's back. And, you know, she's clearly uh, just as strong as she was before. She, um, you know, completely blew away the field. I think it was like a 15-second gap. Uh, in her race between that's her and her. That's pretty sizable, right? So, 15 seconds is, is – that's no small feat. Yeah. So, yeah. So 50 sec 15 seconds, uh, just think about it. That's like, uh, almost a hundred meters, give or take. Um, so yeah, you know, it's, it's a, it's a very, very good gap to have, uh, especially early on in the, in this season, you know, um, just considering that the season's just starting off, you know, we're still in September, we're still two week, two months out from championship racing, uh, and to already have, you know, a 15 second gap over your competitors. Uh, that's a pretty good place to be at. Uh, you know, going off of the of the gaps, actually, Ken and Paula's average gap in his victories has been, I think, 52 seconds. Um, so he's been completely blowing away the field uh, at every race that he's been at. So looking at this, uh, you know, projecting out, is this way too early to be like, oh, we this puts that team as an odds on favorite or I really like that person individually to win? Or can you start sort of already circling some of those people in pencil this early in the season? Yeah, so uh, that I can really kind of already do that. Um, just because cross country, is so I uh, it's very spread out. You know, there's five divisions, um, and we it's different in the sense that there's a lot more opportunity to quite to the state meet. I would say as opposed to other sports. Um, but that any you know less harder. It's just. For example, Division One, they to qualify, you need to be in the top five individual runners, um, or the first two teams. Uh, that's for Division One. 
uh, for division two, three, four, and five, it's top five individual runners and then the top three teams. Um, so obviously depending on your division is, uh, you know, where you're going to be at, but for example, Ken and Paula, uh, you know, I can confidently say that he's going to the state meet. Um, frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if he qualified to NXN or Foot Locker cross country. NXN is Nike cross nationals, um, by the way. Um, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I see him competing at either NXN or Foot Locker cross country nationals, because he's just incredibly talented, uh, as for team wise, uh, I think a team that we should definitely, uh, keep an eye on is Mount Carmel. Um, they're doing extremely well. You know, they've won every single race that they've raced so far. I think they've ran three or four races, uh, and they've won every single one. They're racing at this upcoming meet, uh, Dana Hills cross country event on Saturday. Uh, which will also be a great meet to watch. I'll be there uh, cheering them on, cheering all the other San Diego teams on. Um, so Mel is definitely uh, the top school right now. On the boys' side, on the girls' side, there's actually um, a list of rankings that uh, SD or San Diego coaches put out. Um, so I can go down that list of you know the top three if you want. So. Ooh. Yeah, and just so a plug um, for everybody, if you're of, looking for more of this, go to SD Prep Track on Instagram. That's where you find this. Let's get that follower count up this year. Yeah, so um, this is actually a, an, an old ranking. Uh, this is from September 13th. So that would have been uh, last Sunday, I think. Um, so, but as of last Sunday, uh, on the boys' side, the top 10 teams were Mount Carmel, Otay Ranch, Grossmont. Tory Pines, Patrick Henry, Santa Fe Christian, Westview, Cathedral Catholic, Scripps Ranch, and El Camino. Uh, on the girls' side, you have number one, Tory Pines, Cathedral Catholic, Sage Creek, Poway, East Lake, La Costa Canyon, San Marcos, Rancho Bernardo, Mount Carmel, and Scripps Ranch. Fair amount of those teams seem like, okay, that's predictable. They're somewhere in that mix for the top 10 every single season. Anybody on either of those lists kind of surprise you? Um, on the boys side, I wouldn't, well, this is, like I said, this is an old ranking from last week. So it's, it's to be updated given, you know, the results that just, uh, finished on, uh, Saturday on Saturday's meets. Um, I don't think I'm really surprised at the boys side. I think I'm a little bit surprised with how the order is, but the teams that are on it, I'm not really surprised, uh, for the girls side, I think the big surprise right now is probably Eastlake High School. Um, they're ranked five right now in San Diego County. At the end of last, at the end of this cross country season that just finished, um, they were ranked tenth, and they have they didn't lose a single varsity runner, so they returned their whole squad. Uh, they they probably have one of the most diverse squads or varsity squads that I've seen as of now just because they only have, I think, like three seniors and everyone else or the rest of the varsity squad consists of uh, sophomores and juniors. Um, I think a team that is definitely going to move up in the rankings, though, is Rancho Bernardo, who are currently ranked in eighth. But, you know, after their performance on Saturday, both individually and as a team, um, I think they're bound to crack the top five uh, after this. Th these new rankings are released. Uh, La Costa Canyon will also be moving up. I'm sorry. I said that's a big step up. Ignore my fillers. Just keep going. Oh, yeah, no, I think uh, La Costa, on the girls' side, I think La Costa Canyon will also move up um, just because they're ranked six right now, and they also had a really dominant performance at Mount Carmel. Uh, Torrey Pines, I don't think, will be losing their number one place um, as of now. Neither will Mount Carmel. Uh, they continue to dominate, honestly, in, in all in every single race that they, that they attend. Uh, but, yeah, I think the big surprise right now is probably Eastlake. Woodbridge. You have a couple of different athletes selected on your Instagram um, from Sage Creek, SFC, and Torrey Pines, as you were mentioning. What do you see there? Yeah, so Sage Creek is, um, you know, Mount Carmel's a pretty, pretty good size meet for a San Diego section, uh, but Woodbridge is, uh, it, it's huge. You know, there's, there's, it's such a big race that they they have to make um, a Friday session and a Saturday session. Um, so all of the San Diego County teams raced the Saturday session just because uh, all the teams that went raced in the rated race or the sweepstakes race. Um, the rated race is 
I don't want to say, you know, step down from the sweepstakes race because just to get into the rated race, you, you need to be, you know, extremely fast and, you know, um, you know, it's, it's, but they got to divide it somewhere. Feet. Right. They have to find some sort of divide. So, um, so the rated race is, I guess you could say, is a step down from sweepstakes. Um, but yeah, so we actually had a San Diego athlete win the rated, the men's rated race. Uh, so Mark Tremel from Santa Fe Christian uh, won the the rated race in I, th I think it was 1436. Uh, let me, yeah, 1436. Uh, so that was the winning time. He won by four seconds exactly. Uh, uh, you know, pretty good distance or pretty good uh, time. Uh, considering you know it's it's three miles that they run so you know it's i think a 440 446 average give or take um and then <laughs> yeah Woo! um on the girls side uh annika Sauls from uh tori pines she ran a 1634 uh she finished eighth in her race but she ran the sweepstakes race she finished eighth she was about uh 50 seconds behind the winning time uh, so yeah, so Annika Sauls was actually the fastest San Diego section female runner, uh, Woodbridge, and then you mentioned Sage Creek. That would have been Bryce Gilmore, who ran a 14, 14 23 and he was the fastest um, male finisher at Woodbridge from San Diego section. He also finished eighth actually in the race. He ran the sweepstakes. So we got two more coming up in the next couple of weeks but you said also still a couple of months. So yeah. Will we see any other major changes you think after these next couple races in terms of those top 10 rankings, or are we locked in for a little while and, until we get closer to the end of the season? Mm, yeah. So actually I, I, we're definitely going to see a shift in the rankings um, this week. I don't, I don't think that, top 10 teams are going to like any of the top 10 teams are going to get dropped. I just think that there's going to be a shift in how they're positioned. A little reshuffle. Um, yeah. So like a little reshuffle after this weekend, uh, once the rankings get updated uh, and then on the 25th, we're looking at, or we're looking at one meet, one major San Diego meet on the 24th. So on Friday and then one major uh, meet out of San Diego County on the 25th, but there will be plenty of San Diego County teams that compete there. So um, that's going to, again, reshuffle the order uh, for the, for what the top 10 looks like right now. Uh, and then I think that'll be, that'll be the only major meets to close out September uh, going into October. You're, we're going to be looking at Clovis Invitational, which will happen, I think the second Saturday of October. Um, and that one is in Fresno. So not many San Diego County teams go to that. Uh, only the, the top teams uh, will be attending. Uh, after that, we have Mount Sac Invitational at the end of October, I think fourth week of October. Uh, and that one will be That's also a good marker one, to see. I feel like everybody talks yeah. about setting their sights on having their best race there that year uh, is at Mount Sac. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mount Sac is actually, a, a, in my personal opinion, I think actually – um, Morley, uh, Morley Fields Mount Carmel Invitational course is a little bit more challenging than the Mount Sac course, at least on my experience from when I ran there. Nice. Um, so I think uh, Mount Sac will definitely have some faster times than what uh, Mount Carmel Invitational had. So um, that'll be a good race to watch. And then the week after Mount Sac, there's actually going to be not a cross country meet. It's going to be a track meet. So it's going to be Two mile race. It's called the Hoka One One Postal Nationals, um, and going to be a race here in San Diego at University City High School. Um, and not every, not all the teams will be there, but you know there's going to be some very talented kids. It's going to be very, uh, and it's just an all out two mile race um, on the track. They, I think, like the outside. I think they close lane like six, seven, eight, and nine, so the crowd gets onto the onto the track. Um, it's a very, very good environment. So that'll be, not, you know, not so much a, a team-wise thing to look at, but more like individual to see how everyone's doing as, a, as an individual as opposed to a team. Uh, and that'll close out October pretty nicely. Uh, going into November, that'll be championship season. So most of the leagues will have their league finals um, in the second week of November, first or second week of November. Uh, and then they'll, we'll run CIF the middle of November, 
Uh, and then from there, it's like I said, and uh, and earlier today, it was a uh, you know top two teams for Division One, and then top three teams for every other division uh, will make the state championship in Fresno um, on not Thanksgiving Day, but Thanksgiving weekend. Well, it sounds like that means we got a lot of excuses to bring you back. So I'm really looking forward to it this year. <laughs> Remember, you guys can follow Edgar at SD Prep Track on Instagram. Do you guys have Twitter also, or is it or is it just Instagram? Uh, yeah, we, I th- can double check on that. Actually. I'm not quite sure if Let's it's just so active. The Instagram. Go follow the Instagram yeah. <laughs> right now. Um, yeah. The Instagram is the one that's most active. Uh, we're working to get back on the YouTube channel. We actually had a YouTube channel. It's been inactive, inactive for a little while due to COVID and, um, you know, lack of races, but uh, we're working to get back on that as well. We're back. It's back. Hope we, you know, let's even get you in here in studio come actual CIF championship time. Uh, we'll get some change. Awesome. That would be great. <laughs> Edgar Salazar from SD Prep Track. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time.